Hey guys, so we're on the final part of checking out this 341 games cartridge. This is the final part. We've already looked through all the different games. Uh, I obviously looked through a lot of the oddities and games that people may not be familiar with already. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you some of my favorite games on this cartridge. The top 10 games why you should get this cartridge, even though... Maybe you already have those games and so on, but this, these are games that I think this cartridge makes makes it worthwhile to have. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so we're going to go through the list. This isn't necessarily like a top 10. This is just 10 games. 10 games that I definitely recommend it for. I think it goes without saying Contra is one of the reasons why I recommend this game. And here's a reason why. Because Booyah, right there, man. You don't have to put the code in, you just hit that, hit start, and you're all set. You can play Contra with the 30-man code. Or, you know what, there is the other stuff, of course. Because, I mean, obviously we covered this in the first video, but imagine. Imagine playing Contra where you always have the spread shot, no matter what. Unless you grab the weapon power-up, of course. But you start the game with the spread shot. If you die, you still have the spread shot. I want to show that to you guys. See? Spread shot. I died. I respawn. Spread shot still. Imagine how easy the game would be. You could just kind of blow through it. Just have fun with it and go from there. Now, obviously, that's not something you want to do if you want to get good at it, but if you just want to blow through Contra and just kill some aliens and terrorists and whatnot and have fun, excellent way to do it. That's just... It, it, it's, it's great. It's a great package indeed. Number two on the list... May not surprise you, it's Contra 2, because it ups the ante even more. You can do the 30 lives code as well as start with specific weapons. Fantastic indeed, plus you get more options. Uh, plus you can even do that in conjunction with level skips, whereas with the other Contra, you're only able to do the level skips, but you still have the crappy gun and all that good stuff. So, awesome, awesome stuff, man. So let's go ahead and hop on. Let's do uh, Contra. Let's go to Area 7. Let's just skip all the way to Area 7 and uh, see what kind of weapon we've got there. It'll be interesting to see. Oh, look at that. We've got the spread shot, and we've already skipped most of the game. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that freaking awesome? Guess what? When I, re when I die, I still have the spread shot. It's just awesome, man. By the way, Super Contra is an awesome game. Super C is awesome, dude. I actually played with this cartridge using this kind of cheat, like, from the very beginning, of course. And, dude, it's freaking easy like that. Good times. Plus, the music in this game's better. I think it might actually be better than the first Contra. But anyways, both Contra and Super C are obvious additions for the cartridge. And that's why they put them in the very front. That's kind of like the games they promoted, like they did with the 150 one. They kind of promoted the Mega Man games. So let's move on to the next game. Okay, so for number three, we've got Ninja Gaiden 1. It's actually Ninja Gaiden, but I don't know why they say Gaiden. I have no freaking night. Oh, this is the, um... PAL version? Okay, hold on. Okay, so let's try another number three. Since uh, apparently that one didn't work out. And we've got the full Double Dragon listing here. Hopefully we don't have the PAL version. I think it's the fucking PAL version. You can tell by how fast it moves. Because when it's played on NTSC console, it's going to play faster. Whereas it plays normally on the PAL version. You can tell it's definitely faster. Just listen to the music. But I guess if you want to be a speedrunner and play Ninja Gaiden or uh, Double Dragon with the fastest possible speed, I guess this is a good cartridge to do it with. Because <laughs> it plays faster. Alright, let's move on to another number three. Alright, we got Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Playing at normal speed. And this is an awesome co-op game. So, this is the actual number three, because it plays like it's supposed to. It just has that Japanese text and such, so it's no big deal. 
It's the same exact game otherwise, at least as far as I can tell. And, uh, like I said, it's just an awesome little co-op game. Uh, Two-player simultaneous play, which there wasn't a lot of NES games that did that. Plus, this was, like, one unlike Contra. You know, Contra is always good times, but, you know, it may not be the best game to play. You know, like, not everybody loves Contra, you know? Like, if you're... I don't know, if you got, like, a daughter or something like that, maybe she probably won't be in the Contra. Maybe she will. And that's awesome if she is, but... <laughs> uh, you know, if, if not, well, you know what? Everybody loves Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. I don't know a single person that does, and if they do hate Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, they're probably not even a human being. So, uh, don't talk to them. They're probably like a reptilian or a cyborg or something like that. So, number three goes to Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, and... The sequel's on here, too, if you want to play that for some reason. Okay, so number four. We've got a whole bunch of the Kunio Kun games, but nothing beats good old River City Ransom style Kunio Kun. This is the Japanese version, so don't play this version if you want to actually read the dialogue and stuff. But if you just want a nice little different variation of River City Rampage, where your character is dressed up in a Japanese school uniform rather than... Um, you know, like a, like a punk kind of, you know, sh shindig, then this is a good game to do it with, man. I mean, this is one of the best beat-em-up series of all time, and it's a shame that uh, it never did that well in the U.S., because Japan got, like, a whole bunch of these games, man, and it was awesome. Um, like I said, there's a whole bunch of other games included. Um, you know what? Uh, even though it's still technically number four... I want to show you, or wait, no, that's on the 200, that's 151, never mind. So yeah, check this one out for sure. Number four, this is the Japanese version of River City Ransom, which as far as I can tell is pretty much the same game. It's just in Japanese and you got different clothing and stuff like that, so that's kind of cool, I suppose. Oh, and actually uh, there is some other differences, like in the um, freaking uh, massage parlor or whatever the place is called, your character actually shows more nudity, so that's cool, I guess. But, yeah. <laughs> so, number four, River City Ransom Japanese version, whatever, however it's pronounced. Okay, number five, another good beat-em-up game, Mighty Final Fight. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have multiplayer, but you know what? It's still a solid beat-em-up, excellent gameplay, and, uh, you know, nice little graphics. This is kind of like one of the late games. Plus, another reason why you might consider it is because... This game's one of the pricier ones on the NES. This is a game that uh, you can spend quite a bit of money to get the official cartridge on. And if you only care about playing the game, well, this cartridge is a great way to do it. Um, especially if you want to play on the actual original NES hardware. You know, you don't want to emulate or something. Then, yeah, Mighty Final Fight. It's definitely a great number five pick. And uh, I enjoy this game quite a bit, so uh, check it out. Number six, we've got another expensive little game called Snow Bros. And this is an interesting little game from Capcom that came out. And for whatever reason, it uh, just never sold very good or whatever. And uh, who knows why? Who knows? But this is one of those games that uh, is rare. And I, I don't know if the flicker is anything to do with the actual game. I never played the original cartridge. So I have no idea what's up with that, but uh, yeah, Snow Brothers is a great game. If you're one, if you're one of those people that just wants to play the game and you don't care about the actual original cartridge, and you want to do it at an affordable price on your original NES hardware or clone system, well then, I don't know what to say. I mean, there, I'm sure there's other multi carts out there that can handle the business just fine, but you know what? If you're looking at this cartridge, then Snow Bros is a good way to do it, man. So, number six is Snow Bros. Alright, so number seven is going to be Supari Umuzu, which I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. But this is apparently a game where you do sumo wrestling. And just imagine how uncommon that was for American audiences. This is clearly a game we never got. And this is actually a fun little fighting game. This is probably one of the best little fighting games I think I've ever played on the NES. So this would also make for a great multiplayer game as well. 
Although, you know, given the na Japanese nature, you'll probably need to uh, do a little research to see how to actually navigate the menus to do multiplayer. But uh, if you want to take the patience and everything like that and kind of learn it on your own, this is a fun little game, dude. I really enjoy it. Plus, it's got nice, cute little graphics. And, you know, it's just a, it's just a neat little game, you know. It's uh, definitely one to check out if you want to play, like, a little fighting game on the NES. Uh, much better than the ROM hacks for Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat on this, for sure. Holy crap, those are terrible. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, to Sapario Muzu for number seven. Number eight. One of the greatest sports games on the NES. Hold on a second. I thought I picked Tecmo Bowl. The fuck? So there's two bowling games. So there's seven and a half if you're a really big bowling fan. <laughs> oh, jeez, because there's also bowling here, which we already checked that one out earlier. Oh, gosh. Well, number eight. I guess we'll go with Gradius. Everybody loves Gradius. Hopefully it did the code. I don't know if it... I don't think it did, but... Anyways, Gradius is a fun game. Oh, yeah, because the A button sticks. It's a nice little shmup. You know what? I'm not a huge Gradius fan. I mean, Gradius is good. I think we're going to choose a different number eight. Because after all, fuck Konami, right? After all, why play Gradius when you can play 1942? That's right, man. The original, the OG. Everybody loves 1942. Uh, wrong button. It's been a long time since I've played. It's not as good as 1943, but it's still an awesome game, man. And you've got it here, dude. You can play some freaking 1942 up on this for your shmup shooting needs. Yeah, it really isn't as good as uh, 1942, but you know what, I or 1943, but I still love this game, dude. It's still a lot of fun. And it's probably a bit easier than that game, so it's a good starting point for the series as well. Because you don't have that freaking energy gauge thing. It's just like you get hit and you die, that's it, you know. But you get one-ups, because 1943 gets real ridiculous, because you only get one life. And you just have energy instead, so it's like, at least with this, if you screw up, you kind of get another couple chances, you know, to kind of advance. So yeah, number eight's going to be 1942 for some shmup and needs. So I'll probably play until I die, uh, but you guys aren't going to see that on camera. So we'll go ahead and move on to number nine. Scratch 1942. I forgot that Life Force was on this cartridge, dude. Life Force is pretty sweet. I'm not sure who NDT said, but... This one's definitely better than Gradius and 1942 both, in my opinion, so... So we'll go with this instead for our pick. But talk about some crazy popping. I didn't remember that in this game, dude. Oh yeah, that's right, you gotta use your power-ups and crap. I forget about that stuff. Yeah, whatever. But anyways, Life Force is a great game, and I definitely recommend it, people. It's all about this really cool stage design. I like how the walls, like, grow out and stuff like that, you know? It really keeps you on your toes. I mean, I know it's like a pattern and stuff like that, but... You know, that's, that was unexpected back in those days, most definitely, dude. Like, people did not... Like, when they saw that coming, they're like, oh, snap. And it's still cool this day. It really is. So, yeah, number eight actually could be Life Force. Sorry for the false flags the first two times. <laughs> I didn't really realize all the games that were on this, man. I'm sure maybe there is actually a better shmup on here, but I didn't see 1943, so I guess we'll go with this. Life Force for number eight. Alright, so our number nine game is good old Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario is an all-time classic. I didn't recognize 
it being 1993 for the copyright. I guess this might be like a a ROM based off of a Greatest Hits version or something, but you know what? Dr. Mario is awesome. I think it's a little bit more interesting than Tetris and the mechanics because it's not just simply like, oh, just dump blocks and you're done, you know? Like, this game actually makes you think a bit, so... Dr. Mario is totally a winner in my book, and it's an easy pick for number nine, I'd say. So, uh, hope you guys agree, and if not, well, suck it, because this is my list. You make your own if you want. You know, just buy this cartridge and then make your own list of what your favorite games are on this cartridge. Alright, and our number 10 pick is going to be Shatterhand. Everybody loves them some Shatterhand, so let's check it out on the 340 and 1. Good times indeed. It's an excellent action platforming game, kind of like a beat-em-up Mega Man in a way, you know, like, well, I guess kind of a terrible comparison, because, like, it's nothing like a beat-em-up or Mega Man, but uh, it's a really cool game, because you have a badass hero, and you get to uh, summon, like, little robot companions to help you out, and, uh, yeah, Shatterhand's definitely a good one for sure, man. It's a lot of fun, and it's challenging, most definitely. Go ahead and hit that thing up there. Got to hit all the enemies for maximum power. Grab the money too. I think the money like gets you uh, things you can buy or some crap. I forget. Yeah, yeah, it's something like that. It's been a long time since I played this. Yeah, but whatever. For some reason, I didn't grab that. But yeah, there's a lot of good games on this cartridge. It's really, it was really hard to pick one out. But I think uh, this will do just fine. Now we've got a little robot companion to throw stuff. So yeah, number 10 on the list is going to be Shatterhand. Um, it, like I said, it was tough to pick out the games on the list here. But uh, you know, there's several games that could have easily made the list. Like I've seen other games on there like Batman and Power Blade. And, uh, you know, several other good ones there that we could have picked. So yeah, that's going to do it for this list, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video series. If you haven't checked out the other videos, don't forget to check those out as well. So thanks for checking this out. But till then, Dow Phoenix out.